if you edit on a laptop, especially one with a small internal drive, you probably use an external drive for a Final Cut Pro library. In this video, I'm going to show you a few steps you can take to edit your project on the go with everything on your internal drive without running out of space. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and welcome back to my channel. The first thing I want to talk about today is making a mobile proxy only library. I have my library open in Final Cut Pro and just for demo purposes, I kept this fairly small. This library is stored on my external drive and all the media is stored inside the library. As you can see down here, I have about 2.6 gigabytes of media and with all the render files and extras, this library is just over 28 gigabytes. To make a proxy only library, we first need to transcode all our files to proxy media. Select your event with your projects and media, right click on it and select transcode media. In the pop-up window, select proxy media, H.264 codec and 50% for frame size. This will give you the best bang for your buck when it comes to size versus quality. Click OK and give Final Cut Pro a few minutes to transcode your media. Next, make a new library and choose your internal drive as your storage location. I'll call mine FCPX proxy to keep things clear. Select your event in your original library, right click on it, copy event to library and choose your proxy library. In the pop-up window, include media, deselect your original media and select only proxy media. Any media that doesn't support transcoding like still images and audio files will also be copied to this library. Click OK. If we select our proxy library, at first, it looks like most of our media is offline, except the still images and audio files. That's because the viewer is set to original media. If we select proxy only, everything is there. And if we look in the inspector, instead of having 2.6 gigabytes of media, we're down to just over 200 megabytes. You can now edit your project on your laptop, only needing to connect your external drive with the original media for final export. Once you are ready to export your project, connect your external drive and open up the original library. Select the finished project in your proxy library and click File, Copy Project to Library and pick your original library. Since all your media is already in that library, select Project Without Media and click OK. Switch your viewer to Original Media to make sure all your media is online. Your project is ready for full quality export. Next, I want to talk about render files and selective rendering. For this, let's go back to our proxy library. If we look in the inspector, we only have about 200 megabytes of media, but our library size is over 5 gigabytes. This is because of all the render files. By default, Final Cut Pro renders your media in the background and makes render files, which are easier to edit. Most of the time, these are not necessary. To turn off background rendering, open the Preferences window and in the Playback tab, deselect Background Render. Next, close the Preferences window, select your library in the Media Browser and from the menu bar select File and Delete Generated Library Files. In the pop-up window, select Delete Render Files and All. Our library just went from 5 gigabytes to just over 300 megabytes, more than 10 times smaller. One thing to keep in mind though, is with background rendering turned off, you might get choppy playback or drop frames, especially on clips with lots of effects applied to them. If this is bad enough to affect your workflow, you can selectively render specific clips in your timeline for smoother playback. Select one or more clips in your timeline and from the menu bar select Modify and Render Selection. I call this selective rendering and doing it this way can save you quite a bit of space on your drive. The last thing I want to talk about today doesn't really have anything to do with Final Cut Pro. This is more about keeping your hard drive tidy and clean to maximize the amount of space you have. The tool I use for this and have been for a long time is Clean My Mac from MacPaw. This app scans your hard drive, finds all the unneeded files like outdated cache files, broken downloads, logs and all sorts of clutter and deletes it all for you with just one click. It also comes with an awesome uninstaller tool that helps you completely remove unused apps and all the files that come with them. Honestly, you'd be amazed at how much space all this unneeded junk can take up on your hard drive and Clean My Mac can help you easily find it and safely delete it. 
Malakpah isn't sponsoring this video. This is just a tool I think every Malak owner needs to have. And before I go, I do want to take a minute to talk about Malakpah. Many of you probably don't know this, but Malakpah, the developer behind Clean My Malak, Setup, Clear VPN, and more amazing apps, is based out of Kiev, Ukraine. As of the time I'm recording this video, Ukraine is being invaded by this wannabe dictator. The Malakpah team was prepared for this, so as far as their software goes, it's business as usual. But in Ukraine, innocent people are dying, their homes are being destroyed, and families are torn apart by this unprovoked war. This needs to stop. The team at Malakpah is doing everything in their power to help raise awareness of these horrible events, including free access to clear VPN for all residents of Ukraine to help them stay in touch with their friends and families, free copies of Clean My Mouth for any news reporters covering this war, and much more. I've had the pleasure of collaborating with Malakpah in the past, so when all this started, I reached out to my friends over there to see how I could help. Besides raising awareness of this devastating attack, I'll include a few links in the video description where people from anywhere in the world can go to help out. Also, the link to Clean My Mouth in my video description is an affiliate link. Any money I make from this, I will personally donate to this cause. Have a look at the links in the video description, and if you can, please help out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.